Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and like this video to follow the journey for home education with Mama Dizzle. Hi guys, Mama Dizzle here. So I've seen lots of mixed reviews on the Centre of Excellence course for the Diploma for Home Education. So I'm going to get enrolled, check it out and let you know what I think. So the Centre of Excellence is offering the Home Education Diploma course for free at the moment. It states on the website that the course used to be £127. It's accredited by the Complementary Medical Association, the Quality Licence Scheme and the CPD. Now it states that it will answer most if not all of your questions around home education that's a tall order so let's check it out so signing up to the course was nice and easy if you have an account with the center of excellence already you just need to log into your account if not then create an account was really easy and it took about two minutes no more than that once you're on to the center of excellence and logged in you simply search for Home Education Diploma and click Buy Course. You have to put your details in, but there's nothing to pay because it's a free course at the moment. Once you've purchased the course, you can start working through those modules as soon as you're ready. Module 1, Home Education. So to start with, there was a short introduction video and I'll be honest, I'm not convinced. Um, the video was very staged and every image showed the children sat working from books. Now, I'm going to wait and see, but if that's the way that this course is going, it's failing to address the depth of experience that can be gained by home education. Um, home education is not about sitting at a table looking at books day in day out there is so much more to it so let's see I'm a little bit disappointed by that intro video to be honest with you but let's work through it and uh, we'll see how it goes okay so I've just read through part one um, again it's very basic it's information that I already know some of you may not and it may be useful to you um, but it is all information that's readily available online anyway. It's um, basically about what home education is, what the laws are in the UK and how to go about it. So the difference between a child who's never been registered at a school and a child who is being deregistered from a school. It does highlight the fact that home education doesn't need to follow a set structure, it doesn't need to be tested as long as you are providing an appropriate education. And it also highlights that there are differences if you are deregistering a child from a special educational needs school. However, it doesn't go into a lot of depth about that. Part two, deregistration. Okay, so this section is interesting. Um, it emphasises your rights to deregister your child. Some schools can be difficult if they don't understand about home education and your rights to deregister. Some may think that they have to give you permission. They don't. You are simply informing them that you are deregistering them and they have to comply by law. They might offer you meetings, but you're under no obligation. Again, this emphasises that point. Now, it is entirely up to you how compliant you are with the questions that the school are asking. If you've had a good relationship with the school and you want to maintain that good relationship with the school, then there's no harm in telling them that you are planning on home educating and telling them why. It may help them for the future. However, if you haven't and they're making things difficult, don't forget you are under no obligation. Now, the good thing about this course is it does give you templates. Templates are readily available from many sources anyway, but there are a couple of templates. One, for deregistering your child, and two, for dealing with a school that are being difficult about deregistering. 
part three, the LEA. So again, this is another section that I'm slightly disappointed with. Um, I thought there would be more information in this section with it being such a big part of home education. Um, so it does emphasise the fact that you are under no obligation to comply with their requests. They are requests, not orders. Um, you are under no obligation to fill out their lengthy forms and you are in control. It is your right to home educate. So keep in touch with them. Do let them know that you will be in touch, but you don't have to fill out the intrusive forms. You can let them know that you will be in touch in due course if you've just started home education. And instead of filling out their forms, you can simply write them an annual report outlining the activities that you've done and the progress that your child's made. You do not have to give any future plans to the LEA. Each LEA is different. Um, so what I would recommend is asking your local community groups what your LEA is like, what you could expect from them um, and really seek advice in your area. It's not a generalised thing and uh, as I said I think this section could have gone into a little bit more detail. Okay so after reading through all the, the sections at the beginning you then get a little questionnaire which is 10 multi-choice questions for you to answer that cover everything that you've just gone through. Um, I've just completed that 100%. Um, the questions are pretty basic, but it's good to recap on what you've just read. So I'm going to whiz through the rest of these modules and I'm going to give you a brief overview of each of the modules rather than going through each individual part for the rest of them. And on to module two which is the positives and negatives of home education. Okay, so module two is again a bit of a mixed one for me. I think it gives lots of conflicting opinions. And the problem with this is that each family and each child will have different positives and negatives depending on their circumstances. So something that might be a positive for one family might be a negative for another. Um, finances being a big one. For some, um, home educating can be a financial burden and for some it can be a financial freedom um, depending on how much you put into home education financially. If you end up spending a lot of money on resources and extra tuition and extracurricular groups, um, then you may find that you are spending more than you were before. Additionally, if you have had to give up work to take on home education, then as a family, you may feel the financial burden again. So when completing the questionnaire, I had to be mindful of not what I believed the answer was but what I had read going through the module. Some interesting information and some interesting points in there but again it it doesn't really emphasise enough that each family has different circumstances and will find their own positives and negatives. Module 3, the spectrum of home education. So this module goes through some of the different styles and methods of home education. Um, I've actually done another video on this, so if you want to check it out, um, have a look on my page and you'll find it there. Um, it goes into some detail, however, it tends to swing towards certain methods over others and gives more information on certain methods over others. So it would still be useful to have a little bit more research into any of the methods that do interest you. So this module goes through the different learning styles, um, which many of you may already know, many of you may not. Um, this can be really useful so that you can try to understand how best to help your child to find their learning style, using this to tailor their education around them. 
So I think it's common knowledge that all children learn differently. Uh, maybe. So this is an interesting module. Uh, I did have my first issues with the actual website while completing the assessment for this module. It did actually kick me off a couple of times. I had to log back in, go back to the course and complete the um, assessment for the module. And on to module five, which is materials and resources. So the materials and resources that you're gonna use as a home educator completely vary from textbooks to storybooks to videos to places out in the community. Now obviously this year with the pandemic and the local lockdowns it's important that you check with your local museums, farms, um, anywhere that you might want to go with your child. Some of them may still have opportunities for home educated children However, it just is important to give them a call, see what the deal is with them at the moment. I know a lot of places are closed, I know a lot of groups are closed, um, and it completely varies from area to area. Um, however, when the dust has settled and we are all allowed out again, um, your list of resources and materials is endless. And that's pretty much all that this topic covers. It's quite a quick one quite a simple one um, but it does give you a list if you want to make some notes on some things that you may not have thought about. Module 6 preparing lessons so this is an interesting one for me as a former primary school teacher lesson planning was the bane of my life it was such a long process for every lesson we had to have our learning objectives that were differentiated for the different levels and abilities of the children in the class. We had to outline all the materials that were going to be used, including the teaching assistants, who they'd be working with and what they would be doing with their groups. And in some instances, it would have to have a minute by minute breakdown of carpet sessions and activities that the children would be doing. Home educating is not the same. And that's what this module covers. It gives some examples of lessons that are planned, that's quite nice. And it's good that the examples that they've used are basic. It's a couple of sentences just outlining what they're going to be learning, how they're going to learn it and how they're going to assess it. Also by showing you examples of some of the lessons planned, it's also giving you a couple of ideas for some quite nice little activities that they've put on there for you. Again, it's logged me out. So this module um, basically gives you lots of different examples of lessons and the assessment is mostly on them rather than on how to actually um, plan lessons. So it's quite a basic module. Um, lesson planning is not essential, but it can help for you to have a bit of an idea of what exactly it is that you are wanting them to get out of the activities that you're learning. As I said, this can be just a couple of simple sentences written in a diary. Um, I like to use the I can statements. So I can um, use commas correctly. I can end a sentence with a question mark. I can do my two times tables and then highlight them when they're done, when they can do them, when they have achieved them. Um, but you know, you again, you find methods that suit you. So um, this again was a basic module, uh, but some interesting information and some lesson ideas there for you. Module seven, mastery, testing, grades and university. This is another interesting one as this is something that comes up quite a lot on the online forums people asking especially for primary age how do we go about our children sitting their sats now this is a misconception that parents think that children need to sit sats sats are basically there for the school they're there to assess the school and they're there for the teachers to gauge what they need to teach next and where the gaps in learning are now, as a home educator, 
you're already going to know more than a teacher will because you're on one-to-one -one basis with your child, with your learner. So this section's just going through some of the different creative ways that you can assess your child's learning and how much they have taken in and understand. It doesn't have to be tests and essays. Um, there's a big long list of ideas um, for you to assess your children along the way. It also goes through some of the ways that your children can um, go on to access higher education uh, once they have exceeded school age. So you can of course sit your GCSEs through the IGCSEs um, as an external candidate um, and you can attend sixth form college to do A levels or there are other options later on down the line. You can go to college um, later on in life and do an access to higher education course, which is something that I did to get my teaching degree. But by home educating, it just means that you don't have to study the subjects that are not going to be relevant for your future. For example, if you've got a son or daughter that has a strong interest in mechanics, then uh, GCSE in uh, classical music for example is just not going to be relevant for them so you pick things that if your child is showing a specific interest in something they can do more around those subjects and things that are going to help them later on in life so again I felt like this was quite a basic module and doesn't take into consideration the vast amount of circumstances that will um, affect the outcomes. Some children work best through assessments, some children don't, um, some parents will work best by having those assessments, some parents won't. Um, as for the university, there's a few things that I'm not sure about. Um, for example, the acceptance to university without any prior exams. Uh, I'm not aware of this but it is definitely something to look into um, it does stay on the test that um, if you have an extensive portfolio then you may be able to get into the university of your choice obviously this will depend on what course you're doing which university you are looking at um, lots of factors into it really but yeah another another basic module module 8 Myths and questions around home education. And I've been logged out again. So module 8 covers most of the things that I discussed in my first video, starting your home education. Uh, the rain's just started, so that makes it very loud in here. So I'm going to go and grab a coffee and I will get back to it. Module 9 tips suggestions and advice this one should be interesting this section does have a lot of uh, interesting facts and it covers a lot of things that might be concerning you around home education um you know it can put your mind at ease if there's certain things that you are worried about when considering home education quite a nice little uh, module there to do uh, with some nice little tips and comments for you. The final module, module 10, considering home education. So the last module just goes over some questions that you might want to ask yourself before taking on the journey of home education. So overall it's a nice little course, I've completed it in a couple of hours um, it's. I think it'll be useful for parents who are just starting out on the home education journey but I would definitely recommend more research, look into things in more depth. Should everything on this course be taken as absolute fact? No, there's certain things that I disagree with, there's certain things that need to be looked into in more depth, um, but overall for a free course, yes, I would recommend it for people who are unsure or want to kind of do a bit more research before starting out their journey. Would I be happy if I'd paid £127 for this course? 
No, I don't think it's worth it for that amount of money. But while the course is free, um, I would definitely recommend it just for, for a little side thing for you to do. So overall, it's a handy little tool to give you a little bit more information, um, but definitely do more research, definitely speak to people and, you know, think about it. But I hope this review has been useful for you. Um, if there's anything else you'd like me to review, leave us a comment. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks. See you later. Bye.